What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Pivot Mindset Podcast. My name is Justin. I am your host, and I'm super excited to have you joining with me on yet again another episode of the podcast. If you subscribe to the Pivot Mentality, we believe here that life is all about the pivots, and those who decide to make the pivots decide to become successful. Success, as we know, is a deliberate decision that you make each and every day when it comes to making life's pivots. And uh, man, I got a special treat. Before we get into that, um, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. So first, um, if wherever you're listening to this podcast, we thank you for all your support. We thank you for those who continue to be loyal to this community that we're building. Uh, so if you're listening to it on Apple, Spotify, please continue to give this podcast a rating and review if you haven't yet. And also to my loyal listeners that are on our YouTube channel, we're continuing to revamp and uh, continue to push out more content on the YouTube channel. So if you're listening to this on YouTube, please give this video uh, a thumbs up as well. And as always, share this podcast with any of your friends, with anybody that you think could benefit uh, from making life's pivots and, and doing that. Um, I'm excited today because I got folks with me, man, that helped me make life's pivots continually. Uh, one of the things that's super important about making life's pivots is having a community and having a set of people that you can make those pivots with. And so bringing a special treat, um, you know, bringing some very special men into the podcast to have an amazing conversation um, really, we're going to talk about some fatherhood stuff today, but before we get into the topic of the podcast and start flowing through, I want to just introduce you, uh, to, to the, to the other men that are with me. So, uh, we'll start with Mello and then we can kind of flow through. Hey everybody. Uh, my name is Ryan Blackman. Uh, I go by the nickname Mello. Uh, it's been my nickname since a kid, laid back, cool personality. Uh, that's where it comes from. Uh, I come out here from Los Angeles, visiting my brother, uh, for his, uh, uh birthday, uh, and just celebrating family, being with family. Uh, glad to have these great men here with me. Um, I'm a support manager in IT. I've been in IT for about 15 years. Uh, my social media handle is Mellow2Cool, uh, and I'm just excited to be here, to be a part of it. Let's glad go. to have you on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I, you want to know what? I'm going to pass it to him. I'm going to pass it to Q. Sure. Go ahead. Yes. All right. All right. Yeah, well, my name is Quinn Owens. Uh, I'm a registered nurse down here with these fine gentlemen in Atlanta. Uh, celebrating my brother's big birthday. Um, just love to, to be a father, to be a family man, to be a friend. Uh, I've been on, uh, I've been a nurse for like nine years now and uh, also do a little bit of a construction and stuff. So uh, my brother's. Also, he's also he's an acting. Also, he's yeah. He's, 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 yeah. he's, he's an action. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, he's a, an action fighter. <laughs> <laughs> action packed. Action packed hero. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? My name is Ronnell Blackman. I am your favorite host and MC, if you do not know yet. Yes, it's um, Ronnell Blackman. Uh, I have a great opportunity to share life with these brothers and just learn different things from them, but also uh, provide some additional knowledge, right? Provide some additional knowledge and care in their lives, in their families' lives. And I mean, I stand on the principles of faith, family, fitness, and just included fashion because that was definitely one of the first platforms that I had the opportunity to do more than me. Right. Yes, that's the name of my company. So you can check us out uh, more than me LLC.com or ronnellblackman.com. Check me out on Instagram, social media, all social media, Ronnell Blackman. That's R-O-N-N-E-L Blackmon. So black like the color M-O-N. Um, and yeah, man, let's get started. I, I love this. It. I love the topics that we going. Yeah, let's get into it. So, uh, as you guys see, if you're if you're watching us on on YouTube, you could see that we're in a different environment than normal. So, uh, we hanging out in in Ronell's castle. Uh, <laughs> we were here for celebrating his 40th birthday, and so what better time to 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 get a podcast out, to get an episode? Mm -hmm. And man, I'm really excited to flow through this topic. And actually, Mello introduced this topic, so I'm gonna let him. Uh, kind of tee up, you know, and kind of get the conversation going. But um, as you all know, I'm a father, and I think fatherhood and being a father is one of the uh, most significant things and titles that I have in my life. And uh, father, fa being a father is something that I noticed and realized that was different for everybody. Their experiences, what they had, what they received growing up as a kid, the kind of fathers they are based on those set of principles, those set of dynamics – so um, with that being said, man, Mello, let's kind of tee up the conversation, man, so we can get jumping in. But yeah, yeah what you got on your mind around fatherhood? Fatherhood, man. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, very important uh, uh, topic. And I think it's very important to to focus on fatherhood. Um, you know, uh, we all have different experiences, you know, around fatherhood. We all have different experiences uh, in our upbringing as well. 
Um, but uh, for me, um, you know, I'm very passionate about fatherhood. I'm very passionate about being a father. I have a son. Uh, he's seven years old. Tobias Blackman. He's my little guy. Um, but, um, you know, just just having the opportunity uh, to be there uh, and, and be um, a, a leader uh, uh, to, to the next generation, to, um, you know, ha- giving my son someone to look up to. Um, you know, I think it's extremely important um, as opposed to not being there. But again, you know, we all have different experiences uh, around this. Um, me, myself, personally, I didn't have my father coming up. Um, and that's something that um, drove me, you know, um, to to make sure that I'm there for my son in, in every way that I possibly can be, um, just through the trials and tribulations that I've gone through throughout my life, um, you know, Having a, a, a spiritual father, you know, was was very impactful in my life, uh, and and that was a, a foundation that was uh, set by my, my grandfather coming up. You know, um, without without that, um, I, I I don't know where I would be. You know, so uh, having something um, to believe in, you know, I think is is extremely important, and just setting that example, you know, for for the next generation and for our kids, um, I, I think is extremely important. Powerful, powerful. So it's interesting because, you know, as we were preparing for this episode and and diving into this topic, and so if you're a father or if you're a woman who has a father or um, or supporting a husband or a spouse that is a father, like lock into this episode because this is something that is super important to a lot of us. And I think it's it's got a significant impact, Mm -hmm. right, when it comes Mm -hmm. to just the family, the nuclear structure of the family. Uh, let's not even get into the black family, which is Ooh. a different dynamic. Correct. Um, but I kind of just want to tee up the conversation um, just for everybody here, because like we just heard Melo's experience. But you know, kind of just give some background on like what your what your fatherhood experience was. Not fatherhood, what your experience was when it comes to you being a son and having a father, and what is your experience with that? Mm. So for me, it um, had a lot to do with you said it impact, right? Influence. Um, I learned that I was. Actually, it was almost like a brand new computer that had no programming on it, no, no software on it, no anything. It was just blank. Right. And having that opportunity to just download, to give them new experiences, to give them new settings, so to speak, um, to adjust, make those adjustments and also do the things that are important for me. Right. As a father. So the love aspect, the care the uh, leadership, as um, Ryan just said, you know, leading by example. So taking action, right? Taking action, being impactful, being influential, and then just really showing and showcasing the integrity of what a father needs to be like or should be. Right. And I actually was learned through the process, mm-hmm. so, through the process. So like Melo, what was, give some background on like your childhood. So my childhood, my father was there. I mean, it's my brother. Like he was, he was there presently. Um, in and out, so to speak, but not really leading the family as a father. You know, unfortunately, you know, what we do learn as you get older is, you know, certain things weren't poured into other people to be able to lead their families, right? So, you know, as definitely his his story, you know, and his story to be told, but it left a void in our household, Right. right? It left a void of a man of masculinity, a leader, a decision maker, a provider, someone that would kind of give us that direction, but then also set the example on what a father looks like, even as a husband, Mm. right? So like, how do you make those decisions? So growing up with that, I mean, we did have my grandfather, which was that impactful, influential. He was a pastor, You know, he was that leader in our family. So um, he passed at a very, um, when we were young, when we were younger, he passed on. And But he did, while he was living, lead that example, right? He was the one that everyone looked to, that everyone went to when it came towards um, getting direction, getting counsel, getting prayer, you know? So he was the priest. He was the provider. He was the, you know, he was that individual that kind of kept the family okay. um, on the straight and narrow. But after his passing, it was just, you know, mentor after mentor after mentor coming into my life and me seeing that my biological father wasn't the only um, most important role That's in good. the direction of where I wanted to go. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's good. 
That's good. RQ, what about you? Talk well, about your, your childhood and your experience growing up. See, I had a, a present father. Mm-hmm. I had a father that was there, um, provided, uh, showed me how to be a man. Yeah. You know, that was one of the things that my dad was really good at, was really, you know, just showing what a person should be when they come to taking care of your family. Right. Mm-hmm. Everything. Always had what I wanted. Might not have had what I need. Uh, might not have had what I wanted, but I had what I needed. Mm-hmm. And it, it was always those things where I knew he was going to be there. Um, every game, I knew I looked in the crowd, and eventually he was going to walk in. Dad was going to be there, and yeah. when he, and he walked yeah. in, my game yeah. stepped up. Yeah. You know, because you know I wanted to, I wanted to impress him. You know, it right. was one of those things where I knew his expectations of me, and he didn't even have to say a word because he in, he drilled that into me at an early age. Mm. So my dad was very, very present, very influential in my life. Um, when he passed, I had like a huge void, mm. you know, it was like, almost like, like a piece of me was gone, but it was still there because I knew what he had ingrained in me. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of transferred to, you know, I actually now met my, uh, my wife, her father, and he stepped in the role as, as the person that I could lean on, um, as a man, because no matter how old you had, how old you get, right that male influence of someone who's been your age already mm-hmm. is very important. So mm-hmm. childhood doesn't, fatherhood doesn't stop at childhood. It continues throughout your life. Even when you're 60 years old, if you're lucky to still have your father around, they're still going to be the one that actually still leads you down the proper path if they're there. Right. So mm-hmm. I've been lucky in that regard that my father was there and he yeah. did provide and he did show me like, yo, this is what it means to be a man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, a man take care of, takes care of his family. Mm-hmm. That's real. Through all aspects. That's real. Mm-hmm. Man, it's crazy because like, I, and, I, and one of my good friends, he talks about it. Um, Cause like Q, you actually, for me, at least a minority, mm-hmm. like not, not, I don't know many black men mm-hmm. that had present fathers. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And like, not just like, not just present as in proximity, but like mm-hmm. present in the home. Like every day I wake mm-hmm. up, my dad is here. Like right. he lives here. Right. Like mm-hmm. right. a lot of us had right. dads that may have been present, but Absolutely. they definitely weren't in the home. Right. 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 So like the right. fact that you had a present dad mm-hmm. and he was in the house right. is, is like, whoa, like you're right. a unicorn. You right. know what I'm saying? At least yeah. from, right. from my experience, you know what I'm right. saying? Mm-hmm. And what I've, no. what I've seen and run into. But like talk about, and anybody can take this, but like talk about now as you are a father, because like we're all fathers here. Um, like what that experience is like being a father and potentially how your fa- your experience with your father flows into how you show up as a parent. Whoever wants to take that. I don't know. Cause I was probably the one that became a father first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was young. You know, my son was born. He was, I was 23 years old going on 24. Okay. And uh, one of the things that I noticed, and me and Ronnie had these conversations because we talk all the time. Uh, when, when Elijah was born, I said, bro, this is the first time I'm living my life for somebody else. Mm. I don't care. Mm. It was actually liberating for me. Mm. I mean, I said this, these exact words because, like, I'm actually giving my all to someone else, and I'm not thinking about it from a selfish standpoint because yeah. I just see this little baby here, and I was yeah. like, you know what? I got to make sure everything is right. Mm-hmm. And that was very liberating for me. Wow. And what I tried to do, like I said, I had a good dad. My dad set an example, and how it influenced me is – all the things, the little things that I wanted in him, yeah. I inserted that into what he already had. I had he had already had given me, you know. So, like I said, my dad was at every game. Yeah. I'm at every practice. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> just took that step up. Exactly. Yeah. So like, yeah. it, it was building upon a foundation of uh, of what the previous generation had given mm-hmm. us, you know. And a lot of people didn't have that. You guys are in the generation where you guys are giving everything to for the first time to a set of kids that 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 won't ever know what it's like to not have a father, right. you know, in home right. that's yeah. that's taking care of them, that cares about them. So that's what was what I noticed with me was really just adding to what I already had, not building from scratch, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And it didn't put me in a, a, an ahead of anybody else, but it gave me a solid foundation to know that I'm doing the right thing because I'm doing what I think is best at all mm-hmm. times. That's deep. Yeah. I think a lot of times, you know, we, we go off of our, you know, experiences, right? So um, uh, as a kid, you know, not knowing who my father was, um, you know, I, I just wanted to know, like, I wanted to know so bad, like, who, it, who is he? What is he like? What does he look like? And once I did get introduced to him, I just look forward to those phone calls, right? Like, you know, just give me a call, maybe my birthday, maybe Christmas, you know, and and the times that he didn't, you know, of course I was, I was devastated. I was let down like, man, you know, you feel like you don't want me, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so I think the, the most, 
maybe not the most important, but most impactful thing uh, as a kid is is getting that love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like really feeling that love from mm-hmm. from your father. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll quote Nipsey Hussle. He said, you know, how does a kid spell love? T I M E. You know, spending time, yeah. you know, with your kid, uh, and and maybe we don't have the opportunities or or uh, uh, the availability to always be there for every single thing, every single moment. Right, but right. Uh, such as you know, what my brother Ronell said is being intentional with the time that you right. do have with your kids. Absolutely. You know that that's very important, and and that you know, uh, uh, with me just. It, it drove me, you know, once, once my son came, it was like, man, I got to spend that time and make sure that I'm intentional with that time so that he feels and understands that I do love him. And yeah. it's, and it's, and it's organic, it's genuine, you know, like that love for your kid is, you know, it, 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 it changes, you know, who they are and it, and it makes a great impact in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely, let me talk about um, the fact that not only, you know, raising a young man, a son, my son, Carter, eight years old, but also having a daughter, right? For a father to now be an important and impactful role for a young lady, right? Giving her the guidance, giving her the knowledge, um, being able to say, Hey, this is how I, this is how you need to be treated. This is what you deserve. This, these are the standards that I'm setting. Right. Right. Um, I often get told, man, you treat your son completely different than you treat your daughter. Right. right, And it's important and it's, it's intentional for me yeah. right like I don't like my son I need you to know that I'm here for you now but I might not always be there for you yeah. for you to make decisions right, right? right for my daughter I need her to know I'm here for you no matter what regardless wherever you need to go whatever you need like because I'm dad yeah right I'm so the man the, currently the, in your life but what's the like why you because a lot of people because some people will say like why do you treat them different like like what for you, like, why is the daughter treated differently than the, than, the, than the son? So for me, the reason why my daughter is treated differently is because I know the responsibility that my son will have to have for his family. Mm-hmm. And he has to have that with even even without help. Yeah. Right. right. He has to be able to take that baton and run. Mm-hmm. Right. Where my daughter, I want her to lead and know that she can be taken care of. Mm-hmm. Right. That there can be a male role in yeah. her life, right? In position to give her leadership, to give her direction, right. to, you know, so so she's going to be that backbone for whatever relationship. I need my son to have a backbone. Mm, okay. So, but that's, but you, I mean, in today's day and age, right, you've got, you've got women who, um, you know, it's all about like how they can secure their own bag. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's been a lot of women that have been taught really how to, right, go and fend for themselves and mm-hmm. go and compete mm-hmm. for resources and go and be competitive. And it's not anything, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, no, no. But you're saying you're, you're training your kids up differently. You're, 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 you're building your daughter up, sounds like, to be able to support and be of a support or a help me to a, a husband. Mm-hmm. And you're training your, father, your son up to be able to be a husband and to mm-hmm. lead a family. Correct, correct. And I do believe that, the balance of the household. So my wife being, you know, present in their lives as well. I do believe that that presence allows for the balance to happen, right? For my son to get that additional love and to know like, Hey, this is mama's always going to be there. Right. right? right. You know, Mm -hmm. but then also for my wife to show my daughter, Hey, no, 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 you, you are a woman, right? You are going to become a woman. You are going to lead and lead your family. Right. After when once your husband, you know, you know, just really be able to have those roles and those dynamics. But then also, if it is capturing a resource or the bag, which I know my daughter is going to be after. Right. Yeah. Like there's no that that doesn't limit you from being able to still take um, direction. So so question for you. So what so what, what I'm gathering from what you're saying, you treat your son you're 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 raising your son and, and doing things a little bit different than what your daughter is. Mm hmm. But what that that's being balanced because the wife is doing it on the other side, on the flip side. So mm-hmm. it's not like the, the kid is only getting one side of, a, of, of the of the coin. It's they're getting both, but they're getting it from you and from your wife. Mm-hmm. And that having that that dichotomous relationship that 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 works together. It's a symbiotic relationship 
they get the complete package mm. because what what you're tra- what, what you're not giving on this end, she's giving on that end. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's that's deep, man. I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I would say too, man. Like one of the things, and uh, this this actually is a topic that you know, for my wife and I, we were very like we we parent very differently, mm-hmm. and you know, a part of the conversation that I had had with her was like, yo, like we're we're different, and we're gonna parent different. And what we've got to be careful to do is, like, I don't try to have you be a parent like me. Mm -hmm. And I don't ask you or in that you don't ask me to parent like you. Because then at that point, right, like, our our child isn't balanced anymore, Mm -hmm. right? Right. Like, I am more on the discipline side and on, like, you know, when my if I say something, my kids are going to listen to me the first time I say it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, go do this, go do that. It's just one time and they got it. Right. My, my my wife is not that sweet. You know what I'm Correct. saying? She, she got to say it three, four or five times. Mm-hmm. Right. But if they go crying, if something happens, if they fall, they going up and going to mommy. They going to, they going to their mom for nurturing. Right. They're going to like mom coddle me. Right. But when they get scared, they come to dad. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like if, 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 if it's a dog that's on the street and they're afraid of the dog, they come to dad. So it's like and, and, but but in parenting and this is something that, you know, me and my wife had to work through was like, yo, it's OK that we parent different. It's just that I can't try to micromanage and have you parent like a husband, mm, right? right? And I can't, and she can't have me parent like a wife, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that's one of the, you know, you know, kind of the, the dichotomy of it was she was also raised without a, a man in the home, mm. right? So when she seen men in a father fathering, that felt awkward and weird to her, mm-hmm. right? That didn't feel normal. It didn't feel like, you know, her typical thing. And so what I realized for me, though, was like even through that, like, right, even through like what it was being a parent uh, and raising a child after not having a, my, my biological father that close to my life, I realized for me that, and this is kind of Melo talked on it, is that like not having as a, as a son helped me to be a much better father. Correct. Like, exactly. and man, I know this is such a like prevalent topic these days because there are a lot of men out there that I know that weren't raised with fathers Mm -hmm. and you could look at it from two eyes. You could look at on opposite sides of the coin, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could, you could take that and say, man, like I didn't have my father in my life. And so that's why I'm not a good father. Mm. That's why it's okay for me to perpetuate the cycle. That's why it's okay for me to, you know, like just sleep around with any chick and just have kids randomly and not be responsible for the seed that I'm spreading and the Mm -hmm. legacy that I'm spreading. Mm -hmm. Or I could say, man, like how Mello was saying like, man, my father wasn't there. And so, like, I know what he didn't give me. And because he didn't give me that, I'm going to do all that I can to, like, instill that in my children. Right. And so it's, like, crazy how that, like, that 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 bounce back, you know, it's kind of like the rubber band, right? Like, you pull and you stretch the rubber band. And the more and more you stretch it, the more impactful it comes together. And I think that's, you know, you've got a generation of fathers. And that's why I'm so, like, excited and proud of y'all, man. Because, yeah. like, there's a generation of fathers that are legit stepping up and being better fathers than they've ever seen before. Mm-hmm. And they didn't have them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to pick you off of that. You know, a lot of times, you know, where, where I may have struggled or may have gotten frustrated or, you know, uh, throughout the process of being a father, um, I always told myself, like, I, I can't repeat the cycle. Mm. I cannot repeat this. Like everything in me was like, no, because I knew what I went through. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I knew how it felt as a kid, you know, and I'm like, there's no way in this world, if I have any seed, like I'm never going to repeat that cycle. I don't want any of my children to experience what that felt, what that, you know, experience was like, like it was, you know, it, it, it wasn't the best, you mm-hmm. know? Right. But, um, but yeah. And, and, and even, you know, my brother, Ronell, he would always tell me anytime I, you know, give him a call, you know, he's always there. And he would always tell me like, you are not your father. You know, don't 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 overthink it. Don't let it beat you up. You're not your father. You're not him. Yo, mm-hmm. hold on. Stay there because <laughs> that's a that's a big one. You are not your father. Yeah, man. I remember there there is a um, my aunt right, my father's wife or Jesus, my father's <laughs> sister. I didn't. My my father passed away when I was 12 years old, and so I only have remnants of our relationship. Like, a lot of it is kind of, you know, I remember moments. I don't remember a lot of conversations. I don't remember, like, oh, I remember we, he told me this one story. And, like, that's the, like I, don't, I don't have a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And so, for me, the stories that I, that I hear from other people are the stories that I embody mm-hmm. on, like, my father, right? Mm-hmm. And so, as I was coming up and I was in high school, right? You know, you're in high school, man. Like, you know, I was, 
around chasing girls, you know what I'm saying, trying yeah. to be out here, like having a good time, right? right? And my aunt would say, ooh, you just like your dad. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. that's your dad all yeah. over again. Uh -huh. Oh, man. And yo, <laughs> yo, like, and I, I think that she was saying it innocently. Like, I mm -hmm. think that she was, like, legit just, like, you know, like, yo, your dad used to be over the chicks like that, and yeah, they used yeah. to have all the chicks mm -hmm. and all that yeah. kind of I think she was just saying it on that level, but, like, that's that stuck with me, man. Like, mm -hmm. that was one of those things. Then once I got married, I was like, yo, can I be a husband? Because I'm just like my dad, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. couldn't be faithful. And, like, yeah. I remember having this conversation legit with my sister, my Real. older sister. Because I was like, yo, I don't know if I could be faithful. Like, I don't, I don't, like, this is hard. Like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know if I got it in me. Mm -hmm. And because of, like, that seed that she's sowing. And I don't know that she knew how, like, how bad of a seed she's sowing in me by saying that. But, like, me, it wasn't necessarily, like, I guess in that regard, I, it wasn't, like, a compliment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yo, that's a curse. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah. like being, being like my yeah. dad and I'm not just like, you know, God bless his, his soul. Yeah, right. And, you know, he was a great man and, you know, he had his own battles and his own struggles and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but like the way in the context in which he said it, that was a curse. <clears throat> right. Like, Ooh, you just like your dad. And so I think to your point, bro, like a lot of us are, ch are running away from those demons. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like running mm -hmm. away from like what it is to, 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 like you see your dad and how he was, and it's like that's what I'm not gonna be. Yeah, yeah. You, like Q, you had it a little bit different. Like right. we, you know, what I'm saying me, I had it like yo, like I seen how he moved in ways, and I'm like, nope, that's not what's gonna be for me. Right. But in, in the standpoint of being a husband, my dad might not have been the greatest husband. So I did, I did learn a lot of in the same fashion that you guys. I don't want to be like that, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not saying my dad. He had his flaws. He wasn't perfect. You know, we had we had struggles just like everybody else. Even, you know, the families that didn't have fathers in the house, we still had them. What you just saying that I got to I got to pause for a quick second mm -hmm. and I don't want to take you away from uh, your no, thing. No, no, no. We no one is perfect. No father right. is perfect. Right. You right. are not going to be perfect. Right. And so get you're that right. idea of I'm I'm, I'm going to be the perfect father. Right. No, you're not. Right. Right. Some way, somehow, you're going to drop the ball. Go no, ahead. Absolutely. But being there mm -hmm. is perfect. Mm -hmm. Because if you're there for the right reasons, you can't mm -hmm. go wrong. Because your idea is to make your child better than what you were. And mm -hmm. it should be. Mm -hmm. You know? My son, he's 16 years old. And I look at him, and he's not like an athlete like how I was. He didn't have that drive to be, like, the best basketball player. But his brain and his, like, who his soul is, like, as mm -hmm. a person... Like, he's better than me. Mm. Like, he's mm. more empathetic than I am. He thinks on a high level at an early age, you know. So it was like he built off of what I was and made himself better. And that's what I did. I, I feel like I am a, not a better version of what my dad mm -hmm. was, but I wanted to perpetuate the cycle that he put forth of being in the house. I want that to be the new cycle. Mm -hmm. My dad mm -hmm. was there providing. That's the new cycle that needs to be started. Mm -hmm. And that's what I strive to do is perpetuate that cycle. Mm -hmm. To let my no, my son know that if he does have a family eventually, that he will be there like my dad was. Mm -hmm. Just like his dad was. Mm -hmm. You know, so. You know, something, as we're having this conversation, I'm thinking, and it was something that, you know, I said this to Ryan. We grew up in the same household, had the complete two different perspectives on fatherhood. And what it should be like and, you know, how we should lead. Right. Neither one are wrong. You know, right. neither one are wrong. They're just our own perspectives and our right. own manners. Right. But like something is, is, is interesting because I think that we're so often spoken to seeds planted in us um, of who we are. Right. That we only see the bad. We only see the negative. Like, it's interesting because people all the time say, man, you're just like your dad. Yeah. They tell me this all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all I think about is the negatives. Right. Right. And I think, man, like, what are you telling me? You know, like, what are you? Like, I think about those aspects. But recognizing that that's the goal at the end of the day of fatherhood is for my child to say, you just like for people to say, you're just like your dad. But right. You do yeah, it better. Yeah. When they say that, though, it's not but always it actually, a negative. It's actually a compliment. Right. right. It's not right. a curse. Right. Yeah. They're looking at some of like the outgoingness, the, the ability to orate and, and bring people in, the charisma. 
Right. That's what your dad is. And yeah. and you want and you want that statement to be made on the premise of things that actually matter to life. That's actually positive. Yeah. Right? Like right. you don't want when you fumble the bag for your people to be like, oh, you just like your dad. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. You want it for the good yeah. stuff. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. You want it for right. like, oh, right. you got you got right. you got the business, you got the degree, mm-hmm. you started the family, right. you bought the house. Man, that's just like your dad. Like yeah. you want it to be in the context of positive Absolutely. and like mm-hmm. moving the family forward. Absolutely. And so it's like, it's not necessarily a bad thing to be just like your dad. It's just like, yo, we got to make sure we highlight in the good stuff. Right? Yes. You know, and, and here's the other piece. And this is a, this is a piece that I, I, I didn't realize for myself is how um, genetic, how genetic uh, decisions are. Right. Mm. Like, oh. I realized mm. that, again, I didn't grow up with my dad, like, very close. And he didn't say, all right, son, like, this is, this is who you're going to be. Like, this is what Carters do. Like, this is the kind of legacy we're building. Like th- these are the gifts that you have. Like I didn't get that from my actual father. I got mm-hmm. that from father figures in my life, but there was this whole premise, right? Of like, I started to bump into his legacy without knowing him. Mm-hmm. And I know you have the same story mm-hmm. too. Where like my father was a preacher. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Like I, I ended up getting his preaching wow. license from like my grandmother. I was like, Hey, he bumping into legacy. You know what I'm wow. saying? Like, I end up, I, when, you know, when I was doing real estate full time, like I end up doing a lot with my hands. You know what I'm saying? If, if I got a project and I got in a pinch or we had, especially during COVID, like we had some projects. I was like, yeah, I just got to get in here and get my hands dirty because contra- I can't use contractors right now. Mm-hmm. And like, I was really like legit doing everything, mm-hmm. hanging drywall, doing mudding, like putting in baseboards, laying in flooring, like, you know, doing all the stuff. And people were like, yo, how do you, but my dad was a contractor. Right. Wow. And so I'm like, yo. Wow. Like this, uh, like this stuff wasn't just, and then how he also are with people, like very charismatic, very smart. Like he was always somebody too, that like, he always had like the, like the best stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they, there was like, yo, he was always like, he always had the new thing. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they was talking about, like he had a gate in front of his house and you hit a button and the gate came open and yeah. he was into dogs. He liked German shepherds. I like Dobermans. Wow. Bro, like you, it's like, wow. yo, a lot of the things that you are, mm-hmm. are genetic. It's like it. It, it, I didn't because I didn't see it. It wasn't like, yo, I remember my dad had a dog, so right, I want right, a dog, right. and he yeah. had this, so I want to be yeah, like that. Yeah, it was right. just like I was just being what the, the best version of me, mm-hmm. and like people are like, yo, that's like your dad. Like yeah. he, he was into that kind of stuff. Like wow. he wore hats like that. Like yeah. he was always eccentric, always doing something different, always like, and it's like you, you, some you don't realize how fifty mm. percent of personality is genetic. Fifty mm. percent. Mm. Like, like that's, you know, so, you know, 50% of your, your intelligence, 50% of your, all that stuff. I'm not saying that you can't change and evolve and then level it up, right. but like genetically that's passed down. That's 50%. That's coming from each parent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's crazy that you can even be like live without your father and repeat things if you're not intentional, good or bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. absolutely. Man, that's funny because my dad was there, like I said, and I do a lot of the things that he does. Like you said, my dad was a handyman. He could fix anything with duct tape and some bubble gum. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. I'm the same way. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, <laughs> right, my dad could put, put, put anything together. You know, it was one of those things. Like, that's what my dad was known for. When people had problems, they came to my dad. When he passed, that legacy put, like, it came, came to me. You. Now, was it because I seen him doing it or was it because it was ingrained in me? Mm. Like, genetically, I didn't get any of the skin tone, none of that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get any of that. Right. But when it came to, like, the, the work habit, the ability to actually look at things and, and break things down, and, like, I can look at something and say, oh, this is how it works from the inside, but mm. I didn't have to look at it. That's how my dad was, you know. Mm. Yep. You know, and I get that from him. And that, it's funny that you say that because I wonder if it's a genetic or if it was the, the nature versus nurture because yeah. I saw it, you know. Yeah. Man, it's, 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 this, is, this is such a blessing. This yeah. is such a blessing because I truly believe that communities are built through conversations. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we don't have men in our lives or around us having these type of conversations, mm-hmm. right? One of the things that I would even encourage your listeners to do is, you know, start sparking up some conversations about, you know, background, stories, foundation. What are some things that other folks have learned and how could it possibly help them? you know, deal with some of the things because for a long time I struggled with fatherhood. Mm. I struggled with like, like growing up, I didn't want, so I'm the oldest of all of my siblings. Mm. Right. 
I had to pretty much be there for them, yep. raise them. Hey, and so for me, it was just like, I don't want no kids. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like I didn't been through that moment. I don't, I don't want no kids. Like, hey, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, right. I'm going to be rich uncle. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, yeah, come in, yeah. drop all the presents off and be like, all right, baby, I'm out. Yeah. And you were not lying. So it was right. days where I'd be like, yo, Come on, stay tonight. We're going to go do this. And you're like, no, nah, man, I got to watch Ryan because mommy working tonight. You know, I got to watch, you know. And it was yeah. like, it was yeah. like those nights, like, dang, he was like, yeah. I really can't show up because he had to be there. Yeah. Show, and, showing and, up, yeah. showing up. Uh, I, I just got a, a quick story on that. Uh-huh. Um, you know, again, you know, not having uh, a father there, um, I'm my older brother, you know, I looked to him uh, for a lot of things and he was always there four years apart. So he was out of high school. And, you know, when I went into high school, uh, and then he had went off to, you know, do this uh, uh, um, touring with with modeling. He was getting into that. Um, and so my mom, you know, she uh, wasn't always there for our sporting events and things like that. And uh, we were all gifted with, with different talents. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're mm-hmm. all athletic. We yeah. played every sport that we possibly could. We never had an off season. Um, and, you know, I had a I had a gift of, of running. Right. Like track was, you know, one of my strengths. I didn't actually like it in high school. I love it now. You know, like it's like it's like therapeutic now. But in high school, like I I really didn't like it. But it was just that next event to like do. Right. Right. And so uh, I remember, um, you know, there was a track meet. It was it was a a city track meet. And um, and, you know, again, my my mom couldn't be there. So I didn't have anyone that was going to be there. But, you know, I'm like, man, you know, I'm I'm, I I believe that I'm one of the best in the city. Right. And I was at distance running. I ran the half mile, the mile and and the four by eight. Um, and so, uh, you know, my brother just, just popped up like right before the event, like, yo, I'm back in town. Like, what up? And again, like that, that just gave me so much excitement. Like, oh (laughs) man, like now I gotta, I gotta really do it. I gotta really do it. Right. Right. (laughs) He's been seeing the numbers, you know, Mm -hmm. like, yo, like my brother's doing great, you know? And, and, and I took off, I was running a mile race. I took off, I'm sprinting. Like, I, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Right. I gotta come in first place. <laughs> and I completely gassed myself. Ooh. Like, you know, just trying to, trying to impress like big bro. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I took off. Running, eight, yeah. Eight. Yeah. I was gassed. So I, so I didn't get first place in that event, but it was him just being there. You know mm. what I'm saying? Just, right. just changed the whole dynamic for me right. in that moment. Like I was just so excited mm-hmm. that, you know, I had someone that was supporting me, right. you know, like, you know, from a f- father figure, you know, type and, and, and my brother was there, but, but yeah, you know, just, just being there, man, is, is, is such. That's powerful. Yeah. It's powerful. And I would say, man. and that, that puts me on a, on a conversation piece of, um, for me, like I said, my, my biological father wasn't passed away when I was, when I was 12, but I was blessed that God literally put so many father figures in my mm-hmm. life in different seasons. Yeah, and right. it was like he knew exactly what I needed in those seasons that and he placed fathers that could cultivate those things in those seasons for me. And you know, you you hit on a point that I think to to encourage any men that are out there and you may have not had your father. Like your father may have not been present. Mm-hmm. You know, you may have not you may not have the stories that some of your friends may have on, you know, your dad showing up at your events and you know, your dad doing this and dad doing that. But if I know God to be faithful, you have father figures and people that are around you that can give mm-hmm. you that mentorship and that counsel and that men like figure to be able to help you like flow and walk through life. Mm-hmm. And you know what, what, what Melo was just talking about, like that's what a lot of us have to default to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying is it was like, yo, big bro can be there for me. Right. You know, like there's a neighbor that could be there. There's my uncle that could be there. There's like, you know, my pastor or whoever is in my community that's really looking out for kids that could be there for me. Mm-hmm. And what I realized, man, is that my my father was not there, but it had to be that way. Because mm-hmm. if it could be a different way, it would have been different. Mm-hmm. Like if, if my father was supposed to be in my life, he would have been. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't what God had planned for me. He had a completely different story. And now in my 30s, I'm like, okay, I see how it all came together because the set of experiences that I have, I couldn't have got it from one man. Mm -hmm. I did need a different set of perspectives to help help shape and mold the person who I am. And I think that flows into my context, how I look at life, um, how diverse I am and just everything in my, like, you know, the, the rooms that I can walk into, understanding different narratives, different perspectives. And so for me, it's like, yeah, I didn't have my, pre- my, my actual father present, but I had some amazing men that mm-hmm. stepped up mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and, right. and treated me like they were there yeah. and gave me more than my father could have given me. Wow. And here's the thing. This is the piece that we don't often realize is we don't sometimes realize that that could have been God's protection, mm. that your father not being there could have been God's protection. Mm-hmm. And if it was the best case for you, God would have let your father be there. There would have been some scenario that would have let happen of your father being there. Q, your father being there was the best case scenario for you. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our father's not being there was our best case scenario mm-hmm. because what he was able to give you, maybe our fathers couldn't, they could have ruined us, right? Yeah, we, right. we often think on the negative, that. like, yo, because if my father was there, I would have been this or yeah, I would have been yeah. able to not go right. through that. It's like, nah. Excuses. You, you, you could have been, yeah. exactly. you know, and yeah. so it's like, I look at it too, like, I, as I begin to mature and realize, like, man, like, I've gotten to get a unique set of, of uh, principles. Like I've had successful businessmen as father figures. I've had people in the community as father figures. I've had pastors as father figures. I've had like, um, you know, like great family men as father figures. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had that kind of experience had my father been present, right? I would have, mm-hmm. that stuff would have been blocked. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for any of them that may be listening to this episode, man, is like, I just, I just give flowers to every father figure that I had in my Absolutely. life that really stepped up and seen this young kid who was fatherless, but did want the best out of his life and was like, mm-hmm. you know, really trying to be the best version of himself and like really just doing what they could to help mm-hmm. this kid, like do what they knew he was, what he was capable of. So, so it's interesting because like for me, Everything that you said is 100% fact. The thing I would love to add even to that is to anyone listening out there that doesn't have a present or didn't have a present father, that doesn't mean that you were destined to be to be absent. You were right. destined for failure. Mm-hmm. That just means that there's opportunity elsewhere. Right. You talk about the pivots. Right. This is the pivot mindset podcast. Right. There's pivots in life and there's seasons, seasonal people in life. Right. Your father may have just been there to give you birth, give you life. Right. I mean, when you think about the chances of that one sperm out of like so many million. Right. Like like I mean, when you when you think about it, you that's on purpose. Right. That's done. That's done with um, impact. So, with that being said, like even for me and the story that Ryan just told, you know, with me showing up and coming, like the best thing about that for him was me leaving and not being there, right? Because if I had always been there, he would have never known what it felt like to have me show up. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Unexpectedly, right. or this and that and other. So it's almost like the superhero, so to speak, right? Yeah. In everyone's story, right. like you gotta have a downtime in order to really appreciate that uptime. Absolutely. Right. And that's one of the things that, for me, that I've learned with fatherhood, it's I may not show up every single. I may not be there every time that you want me to be there, right. but I am gonna do my absolute best to be there every time you need me. Every single time that you need me to be there, I'm going to be there and I'm going to be better and better. I'm going to continue to grow and yeah. develop to be better because guess what, man? My, my boy Bates say this all the time. We winging it at best. Mm-hmm. We winging it at best. I don't right. have a manual for my kid. Right. Right. right? right. Like, like your son is as close as my son. Right. Will ever be right. Like, mm-hmm. like, I mean, they are almost the exact same kid. We right. talk about this all the time. Right. <laughs> but like, but they are still different. Right. Mm-hmm. They're still different and they're still having um, needing to be led differently. So, right. I mean, like that for fatherhood, for me, it's like just understand that you have an opportunity to get better each and every single day. Right. And that you are on stage. Yeah. They are watching. Yeah, right. absolutely. Man, and, and one of the things that kind of, you know, pivot off of what you're saying, that's the reason why I coached for so many years. You know, I coached mm-hmm. football for seven years. I coached basketball for five years. Yeah, let you me know, not even talk about things. my coaches. I forgot right. about all oh, my right. coaches. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, and that was my way of one. One, I, I I coached in the inner city, the west side of Akron. You know, we there was most of my kids didn't have dads that was in the stands. It was moms dropping their kids off while they went to do what they were doing and then picking them up after football practice. I got a a a, a, a player who they they moved out of the area. They mm-hmm. moved six seven hours, and mom still hit me up like, yo. You should come see him. He's playing good. And I haven't coached him in years. Like he's he's like really excelling. I was his first coach. Right. Mm. So in, in in the future, if he ever goes to the NFL or something like that, I'm gonna look back at that like, yo, 
Yeah. I was the first person that saw potential. When nobody else saw potential in that boy, right. I was the first one. Nobody wanted that boy because he was bad. He was acting out. But that was because the, the, the dynamic in his household wasn't there. Yeah. Mm. So I always try to make sure that what I got from my dad, I gave to my boys. Mm. And people were like, man, why you don't treat your son like like better? Like, like they was like, I didn't play my son favoritism. My yeah, son was on the line. He was <laughs> yeah. this. You know, and they like, yeah. man, I, I'm seeing other dads trying to make the, their kids running backs and stuff like that. That's not my son's place. Yeah. I'm not here just for my son, even though he's on my team. Yeah. I'm here, all these boys are my son right now. Right. And I mm. want them to see something different in me that they might not necessarily see in the neighborhood that they're in and yeah. the household that they're in yeah. because I got something that they didn't get. Mm. And I want them to wow. see that, you know? I see it, Matt, man, some of my boys are going to college now that Crazy. I coach when they was wow. little. And I'm looking wow. at them like, Man, these wow. boys like that. I had them when they was five, six, yeah, or seven. Yeah. You know, yeah. now they getting they they doing college visits and stuff, and it just blows my mind when I see that. You know, so you you know it's interesting because Quentin just reminded me of something because he got me into coaching. Mm. He told me to coach Carter's basketball team, mm-hmm. and I was one hundred percent against it because I was like, yo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have the time, I don't have the mental capacity, right. I don't have the energy. Bro, you know my schedule. Like, like I really, when do I have time to coach, to put plays together? And we're talking about second graders. Oh, right. Yeah. We're second. talking about first graders, mm-hmm. second graders. It's like herding cats. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is, herding cats. So, but one of the cool things about it, and even talking about fatherhood, is learning from other fathers. Absolutely. Right? Like, I'm in an area, I'm in a community where fathers are showing up. Right. Fathers are showing up. And the cool thing about it is we're talking and we're all like trying to figure it out. Yeah. Right. They're coming to me like, hey, coach, thank you so very much. Is there anything that my child can work on and I can work with him on? And hey, we're going to take him to this camp. Would your son like to go? And, you know, can we pick him up? Hey, like, what are you guys doing during the holiday time? And hey, I know you're busy because you got your business. I'm I'm seeing this, but we just really appreciate you. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right, like, man. Like that's huge. Yeah. And I was getting different. I was getting different experiences. Like when the dads were showing up to my my practices and games, and they like, well, you should be doing this with my son. You should be doing that. I'm like, no, no, you should be here seeing what your son is doing. Right. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know. Right. Yeah. So you was getting the exact opposite coaching yeah, yeah. experience. Not till later on, till I switched leagues and stuff like that, did I start getting those type of flowers and stuff like that. But I had so many dads that was like really ruining their kid. Yeah. They coming to like, yo, my son should be the star. I'm like, right. You didn't come to practice. Yep. You didn't see the fact and that I got ego. five kids that's fast. Than him. Yeah, and that's you all know? ego. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know saying? like, why yeah. ain't you at the practice? Exactly. If you was right. present, right. you would have seen that your son ain't that sweet. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. right. let's be, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm, and I was going to say, man, like, you know, I want to start landing the plane on this and that, you know, really, you know, the, the goal of this of this episode was really to empower uh, any, any fathers that are out there and, right. like, you really are maybe not that, like, confident in your abilities to be a father. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe it's based on what you've seen or what you had. And I just want to tell you, you know, life is all about the pivots, right? And, and you can make the decision to change your life. And you can make the decision to change the dynamic of your family tree. Like, it could all start with you. And, you know, I just believe that if you're listening to this episode, that you're already committed to becoming a better version of yourself. And that could mean that you're not, that you're doing it on the back of brokenness, that you're doing it on the back of, of, of being cut and being hurt and being, you know, having trauma and having, you know, these things that may be like going through your mind or maybe inadequacy in your ability to show up for your child in a way that like you missed. And like, I just want to encourage you that you're exactly where you're supposed to be mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. everything is going to work out and that your past isn't and doesn't have to be a prison to your future mm-hmm. and that you can make the decision to become a better father than you've seen an even better father than you've ever thought that you needed. And I think it just, it all counts or it all takes is, is being okay with getting uncomfortable and knowing that there are resources out there for you, that there are other figures, that there are other men that you could be connected with and accountable with. No longer should you be okay with your boys not being present in their children's lives. Like mm-hmm. that's, that, that has, that cannot Bruh. be a cool thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if you're not present in your, in your, in your kids relationship, like in your kids lives like you can't rock with me like we can't Man. be friends like yeah. we right. can't yeah. that's my we words. can't rock exactly, yeah. bro. like we, exactly. that's integrity bro like yeah. mm-hmm. I, like why are you spending time with me and you ain't seeing your kid all Absolutely. month right. you know what i'm saying like yeah. come on don't so it's like but it but it takes men who set those standards and hold other men accountable mm-hmm. yeah. you know what i'm saying it's, it takes other men that that says like yo bro like you need to stop being out here in these streets and like you need to sow everything you got into your kids you right. need to right. stop chasing these women and start chasing 
like your kids and start making sure that they feel loved, that they feel appreciated. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I do know that when when a father is present and a father is in a home and a father is in the community, the entire community is better. Mm-hmm. The stats mm-hmm. show it out yeah. so mm-hmm. vividly yeah. that mm-hmm. when fathers are present, when fathers are nurturing, when fathers are showing up, when fathers are at the game, when fathers are disciplining, when fathers are doing what fathers are supposed to do, mm-hmm. then it changes the entire dynamic of the family tree. It changes the entire tax bracket. It changes the prison to pipeline like flow. It changes the ability to get degrees. It changes mm-hmm. families able to level up and buy houses. It changes our economic status. It changes mm-hmm. our social economic status. It mm-hmm. changes everything when everything. when present when fathers are present. Mm-hmm. And so it's like no matter where you are, man, like, and you may be somebody out there that is a great father and you're, you're fathering out of that brokenness. You know, we just talked about it. Like there's a bunch here who we're fathering out of that brokenness, like chasing or running away from the father we didn't have and showing up in a, with, with the place of man, like I want to be the best like father that I could be to my kids. Mm -hmm. And I want to salute you out there because I think you're heroic for doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And the, pre- the premise is out there, right? Like, there is no perfect father, and you won't be a perfect father. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter what, you're going to mess up your kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? You're going like, to make mistakes. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to jack your kids up yeah. because you jacked up. They're yeah. going to blame you for something. They're gonna, oh, right. yeah. Right. They're going to blame you for something. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be something right. that you like, man, what? How did I get, how did right. I get blamed for yeah, that? Absolutely. So it's like, you're going to mess up your kids, and like, but that's not the goal. The goal is that you move your family forward and that men know what it is to be a man and what it is to walk in in leadership and what mm-hmm. it is to walk into a headship. Mm-hmm. When you understand that biblically, God told Adam to name everything, mm-hmm. everything in the midst of the garden. I want you to name it. Mm-hmm. And some of you might be struggling because you haven't finally named your legacy yet. Mm. You know what I'm saying naming was a was a was a was a right to the father. Yeah. You could name your children. You could name the animals. Every animal that's in this world right now is named by Adam. Mm -hmm. And so some of us could take the passivity road, but in in not naming things, or you can say, man, you know what? Like my family is going to be ahead and not to tell. Like my last name is going to be much better than my first name. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create legacy. I'm going to build children that, that's, I'm going to create children that significantly move our, our city, our neighborhood, our country forward, our demographic forward. Like you have to start naming things. You have to start putting labels on things and things that are not as if they are. Like you have to start faithing and claiming the kind of person that you'd like to see like come into the earth. And that starts with us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That starts with men taking the men place and being what men are supposed to be and stepping up in ways that like the government ain't gonna bail you out, bro. No. Like no. The, your baby mom or the, your wife or whoever is not gonna bail you out. Mm-hmm. Like you have to step up and be the man, you know, and show mm-hmm. up for your children because at the end of the day, like it all stops with us. Mm-hmm. You know, the buck stops with us. You know, you know, I don't care. I, I know all the rights are out there and there's tons of rights and I support all the women, man, but men, men run this. This is our country. Hey. This is our place. Like we, God put this in the men's hands, mm-hmm. not because there was a, there was a desire on sexual orientation, but because that was how he set the structure. Right. Yeah. And it was, it starts at the head. Yeah. And we are the head. And so it's like, I just wanted to put that out there, man, like to, to just allow men to continue to step up and be their best versions. And so, man, like as we start to land this plane, I love to just kind of get like some final thoughts for everybody before we close it up. You know, as we kind of just frame up, you know, what it is to be a father and our experiences being a father, you know, Melo, for you, man, like, you know, just kind of frame up for you. Like, you know, as you kind of think about what the topics we discussed, like what you like to leave for the audience? Again, you know, you're going to make mistakes. That's OK. You know, um, Every day is a new opportunity, um, you know, grab and, and, and take control of that, um, you know, uh, being there. And, and I think in, in this time that we're in and in this generation that we're, we're in and the next generation to come, technology has advanced so much. There's so much influence out there. You know, it's so easy for these kids to get influenced by anything that they see. And, right. you know, it's 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 so easy for them to have that access to all different types of influence and, you know, such as what you said, Justin, it, it, it starts with us. It starts with us being there, showing up every single day uh, uh, as, as fathers, as men, you know, being that, that backbone, uh, it being the leaders uh, uh, to our kids. So I, I think that, um, you know, uh, being intentional with our time, you know, with our kids, you know, that's, that's extremely important. Um, you know, leading, leading by faith, you know, uh, and, and just, just showing and, and, and giving them that, that example of what 
it is to be like a man, to what it is to be like a husband, what it is to be a, a father, uh, you know, for, for, you know, our kids. And um, I think, I think that's just really important. Mm -hmm. Now I would, I would definitely like to say, or um, complete mine with control the controllables, mm -hmm. right? Like you as a man, as a father, as the head, um, not the tail, as the leader, mm -hmm. right? In your legacy, mm -hmm. in your last name, like control the things that you can control, mm -hmm. right? And if that is your mindset, if that is, are your actions, mm -hmm. if that's your time, right? Figure out how can I invest to be there in the future, mm -hmm. right? For my family, mm -hmm. for my kids, 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 right? Like, can I make decisions now? Because we all know that our decisions today affect the next generation and the next generation. So can I make the decisions right now? Can I take this opportunity today, right? Today, tomorrow, next week, continue on for life, right? Can I continue to show up and be the man that they need me to be? My future mm -hmm. needs me to be, yeah. right? Yeah. Making those decisions. So that's kind of where I want to leave it off with um, fatherhood. Yeah, well, well, fatherhood, like you, you hit it, uh, the nail on the head. You can't, you can't rock with me if you're not a dad, if you're not in your kid's life. Mm -hmm. And I, I think what that actually more so speaks to is actually being around like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm. And being around individuals that aren't of like mind, it's your job, unfortunately, to show them that. If you see one of your boys, you see a nephew, you see a cousin, and they're not doing right, you should step in and say, hey, look. This is important. Show them this podcast. Show yeah. them what impact being a father, not only to your kids, but to the community, means. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it changes the dynamic of everything. Scholarships, uh, opportunity for others you know, to grow, having men actually step up. Mm -hmm. You have to raise the community as much as you're raising your own kids. Mm -hmm. you know, that has to be of your mindset. And if it's not of your mindset, then you need to change that mindset. Mm -hmm. you know? So just be around like-minded individuals and actually do what's right. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. do what's right. Man, well, there it is. Listen, everyone. Uh, man, I just want to thank you for uh, locking in and tapping in with this episode. Uh, I will leave Q and, and, and Mello and, and Ronell's all their contact information, their social media, all that kind of stuff where you can find and connect with them and, and just follow them and see how they're being phenomenal dads. Like I'm telling you, if you're a father and you connect and watch their socials, like you'll like it'll encourage you to be a better father. Um, but always, guys, like I appreciate you for, for locking in and listening to this episode. Um, as mentioned before, continue to give this podcast a rating and review. Uh, thank you for being loyal listeners. Thank you for hanging out with this, this podcast. We will continue to bring more of this out to you. And remember, life is all about the pivots. Those who decide to be successful make the pivots, right? So we have the choice to continually make the pivots in our lives. Those who decide to make those pivots, they decide to be successful. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.